General, the um, uh, what's the, the 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 problem you're getting at? Is it the employer not uh, uh, providing, uh, making sure that employees are vaccinated or masked, or is it the employees who decline to be vaccinated or masked? Well, it's the grave danger to exposure to COVID-19 at work, who, Justice Thomas. Who and is trying, who refuses to do that? Ultimately, what the agency is doing with these standards is requiring that either through a vaccination requirement or through a masking and testing policy that unvaccinated workers who stand the highest chance of contracting the virus at work, of infecting others at work, and then if ultimately if they get a, 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 a if they catch COVID at work of then suffering death possibly or even hospitalization are protected in all of those circumstances. So I think what this standard does is it regulates employers by requiring them to adopt a policy that will directly target that grave danger. I, I understand that, but who is declining to do that? Is it the employer or the employee? I think it can be both. There are many employers around the country that have voluntarily imposed these kinds of requirements with their workers in recognition that vaccination is the single most effective way to protect workers in the workplace or that have used masking and testing requirements to the same end. Uh, so many employers are doing it, but part of OSHA's function and what Congress charged the agency with doing is to look at those kinds of best practices and impose them through standards to ensure that workers, no matter what specific controls their employers have in place, are maximally protected. One last question. Uh, you may, I think you put quite a bit of weight on the acute uh, crisis uh, uh, that we're in. Uh, but do you, would your argument also be, would your argument be the same for any infectious disease that uh, is taken into the workplace? No, I think that with respect to other infectious diseases, it would be necessary for OSHA to develop the record to demonstrate that the requisite risk level that the but statute could, requires I'm, is satisfied. It's not that you would do it, but could you do it? If there were, in fact, a grave danger to employees posed by another infectious disease, then yes, we think that Congress clearly contemplated that OSHA is, is obligated and charged with the responsibility. You, has, has OSHA ever done that? OSHA has enacted any number of, of standards example. that address those kinds of threats. For example, the bloodborne pathogen standard that we have pointed to before was intended to protect employees from the risk of viruses that they can contract through bloodborne transmission. So is it's that not. In, is that in the general workplace or just in healthcare? Uh, that standard that applied anywhere where employees can predictably encounter bloodborne pathogens. So it wasn't just the healthcare context. It can apply to flight attendants. It can apply to janitors. It was a standard that directly targeted uh, the exposure wherever it exists, just like this one does. Thank you. General, uh, you said just a short